All right. This kind of moves me to the, 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 you know, the saddest part of the evening. This is our last speaker, and I want to bring out Mark Deutschman. He's going to talk about whale's tail and a shark tank. So let me uh, go on to say he has been selling real estate since 1986. So just really quickly, what were you doing in 1986? I wasn't selling real estate. Uh, he founded Village in 1996, Core Development in 2003, the City Living Group in 2005. He is the author of One Mile Radius, Building Community from the Core, an avid juggler, stamp collector, and a kayaker. He's married to fellow EO member Sherry Deutschman. Mark will tell a tale of how a shipwreck led to an accidental career and then how he almost gave it all away, only to be saved by an impromptu EO forum in a shark tank. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Deutschman. When people ask me how I got to Nashville, I often say, my boat caught on fire. And indeed, three years out of university, armed with a zoology degree, I worked with the killer whales in the frigid waters of British Columbia. About 150 whales came in every season to eat the coho salmon and to rear their young. And my job was to take pictures of their dorsal fins and saddle patches for a photographic identification study that was happening at the time. Well, my equipment was an old Nikon camera and a really incredible boat, a 12-foot Zodiac with an engine, which is essentially an inflatable tube. At the end of my second year, as I had packed up my camp and I was leaving for the long trek back down to California, I came upon a super pot of whales. They were moving in my direction, so I slowed my engine, jumped up on the front of my pontoon, and said goodbye to my friends. After about 45 minutes, I looked back, and my engine was smoking. When I jumped back and pulled off the cover, the electrical was fried. My engine went kaput, the whales went one way, and I went the other. I was screwed. I didn't have a cell phone, that was way before those times, nor a radio, but I did have a windsurfer on board. I had brought one up that year to learn how to sail. And so I figured out how to rig the sail on my boat, and for nine hours, I journeyed through the straits, dodging barges in the shipping lane and battling tidal rips until, exhausted and elated, I landed on a little island. And I walked in, and I was so grateful when I found a man with long hair and a long beard and his hippie girlfriend. Well, I wasn't going anywhere, so we became fast friends. About five years later, on this day, my father died, and I was back in Maryland helping my mother resettle. And I got a call from Joel Solomon, that bearded man, and he was down in Nashville, Tennessee. He told me that his father had passed away and that he was there settling the estate. He invited me to come down for a visit, and when I did, I never left. His family was in real estate development, so I got a real estate license. And I got involved in some community causes, including the Streetscape Committee in Hillsborough Village. And when people asked me what I did, I said, I sell real estate within a one mile radius of Hillsborough Village. And they said, that's all you do? I said, well, yes, but I know the condition of all the houses coming on the market. I know if they're quadplexes, triplexes, duplexes. There was a lot of them at the time. I know that Vanderbilt wants to get their employees back near the campus. And the prices are great. You can buy a house from between 60,000 and 110,000. <laughs> Imagine that today. So the strategy worked. Soon I was selling 27 houses a year, then 43, then 62, and I became the top urban agent in the city. In 1996, I decided to start Village Real Estate Services with two agents and, of course, Hillsborough Village. And we set out to change the way real estate was practiced. I gave 5% of the company to the Village Fund, which is now housed in the Community Foundation. And we thought that as we grew the company, we would figure out how to work with our social profits to give back to things that involved homes, neighborhoods, community. Well, in 2003, I started Core Development. We started a project called Worthen Mills Lofts. And then in 2005, I started the City Living Group to help 
developers sort of mitigate their risk when they were selling multifamily residential projects. By 2018, I had grown Village to over 350 agents and staff. But to tell you the truth, I was weary. Uh, agents are prima donnas. Um, the competition was fierce. New national companies were coming in and offering deals that they couldn't refuse. And it was taking too much of my time. I decided to go on retreat, and I went back up to British Columbia to visit my friend. This is Joel Solomon. He's been my partner and lifelong friend. He's a bearded, long-haired guy from the past. We both now have houses up in British Columbia on the same island, between Vancouver Island and the mainland. And I retreated, and for a few days I wrote out a treatise, and I decided I was going to give the company away. Um, it seemed like a great idea at the time. Uh, I was going to give some to the village fund, and then I was going to reward loyal agents and staff. But it was complex. And when I took it to Joel, he said, you may want to pause. <laughs> well, I did. I took it home to my wife. I was still excited, planning to do it. And she said, you are crazy. <laughs> when I sold letter logic, I brought home the bacon. Don't you think this is a family decision? <laughs> so I took it to EO. And I made a presentation to my four mates. And I think Alan Young said it best. He said, Mark, your heart's in the right place, but you're just tired. And fatigue makes cowards of us all. And so I guess the best advice I never took was to pause. And I didn't do it intentionally, because opportunity came knocking. Uh, about a week later, on December 7th, we were hosting our annual holiday party. And we decided on a carnival theme. I had been teaching a lot of my agents and staff how to juggle that year. And I hired some of my friends that were in the juggling club, playing by air to help choreograph the whole thing. And they even allowed us, some of our brave souls, to perform. These are my new jugglers. Um, but we are celebrating something we called 22 in Review, in honor of 22 years. And we had invited about a hundred of our social profits to come, people who had been receiving monies through the Village Fund over the years to attend. We had given about $2.1 million through the Village Fund, and I wanted to symbolically up that to 2.2 in honor of 22 years. And so we did, and we gave out a series of checks, and one lucky organization got the $22,000. Well, as I milled through the crowd and talked to all of my friends and their families and social profits, I felt really proud of what I had built. And I felt really good about what we'd been doing in community. A week later, though, I didn't feel so good. I had heard, heard through the grave front that some of my agents and former agents were going to form their own company. So I called David, and I said, David, what's up? And he goes, well, we all came up through the company together, and you built a great community-facing real estate company, and we sort of want to be like you. And I had one of my best thoughts ever. I said, why don't you just buy in the village? And he said, I didn't know I could. Well, an hour later, we had scheduled a meeting. And I sat down with their team. And they said, we'd want to buy the majority of the company. I was like, OK. We'd want to buy the buildings that house the agents. I said, great. And we need to close fast. We've already announced. I was like, super. <laughs> well, the problem and the opportunity was that the next day, I was embarking on a journey to satisfy the dream of Max Goldberg, one of my foreign mates, to dive with the great white sharks. And on the plane, as we went across the continent, with Derek Bell, Nick Ogden, and Jamie Pfeffer, who he'd invited, I looked at my email, and I had an offer. And it was a good offer. They wanted to buy the company. I ran up and down the aisles talking to my mates and said, listen, We've got to have a plan. So when we got to San Diego, I assembled my executive team, my business broker, and we went and we bought a satellite dish with a phone so that I could communicate on our journey. See, we are embarking on a journey to Guay Guadalupe Island, which is 18 hours offshore into the Pacific, to dive with the great white sharks. When we got on board, it didn't go so well. First of all, we hit 12 to 14 foot swells, and we all got a little seasick. And by the time I started setting up the satellite dish, it didn't work. I called an immediate form emergency meeting, and I said, guys, if I can't communicate, this thing's going to be off. 
This is the biggest deal of my life. Well, the captain heard me and he said, hey, Mark, I've got a satellite phone up on the bridge. Come on up. So I went up and he said, let's set the heading to 192 degrees and you've got the helm. So I called my team. They were panicked. I was a few hours late. And I said, calm down. We created a counter offer. And then I went to get some shut-eye. When I woke in the morning, we were coming into Guadalupe Island. And the light was beautiful. The island was primordial. You could see the elephant seals on the shore, which is the food that the great white sharks eat. And as we set our anchor and started setting up the habitat for the sharks, I went and called my team again. And they said, they accepted. Oh my gosh. I went down into the water. And as soon as I did, great white sharks emerged. And I was just looking at their teeth and their menacing presence. And I was shivering. But not just from being with the sharks. I was shivering at what was happening to me in my life. And we fulfilled Max's dream. We dove with those great white sharks, Mr. Goldberg. And by the time we got back to shore, the deal was closed. Now, if you told me back then that that magical journey with the killer whales would lead to me stranding on the island to meet my best friend and partner, which would lead me to come to Nashville, which would cause me to get in a business I would have never intended, and then that I would be selling my company on an epic journey with the great white sharks, I would tell you it's a big fat fish story. Thank you. <laughs>